I have never ever been played on to stage, you know. This is the first time. It's, it's lovely to be in an ACC church where they just, you know, you get a worship team, bless you as you come on to stage. And um, thank you also for the care packages and something. If you don't know, if you've never been a guest speaker here, because you're never a guest speaker in your home church, uh, but now I know what they get when somebody comes in from outside. I've got a care package. I've got a little list of instructions, things to do and where to go. I'm just thinking, this is fantastic. I'm in the wrong denomination. <laughs> you mob know how to make a person feel welcome. And for that, I say thank you. I'm also thankful uh, uh, today that I get to, I bought this jacket on special in Brisbane about two or three years ago, and there's nowhere in Queensland to wear it. So um, <laughs> it's really lovely to be uh, back in the ACT where you get to wear something um, uh, from fashion two years ago and uh, uh, drag it out of the cupboard and, uh, and, and put it on. Daniel and his wife Lisa and my family go back many, many decades. Both our parents served in ministry together. Lisa's parents uh, were also amazing church leaders uh, that were uh, contemporaries of my parents in the evangelical indigenous movement here in Australia. And uh, so we all knew each other as children and we've all sort of grown up together. You know, stuff happens. So I'm a son of a Baptist minister. Any preachers, kids in the house this morning? Yeah, yeah, I see that hand. Yeah, I see that hand. So I, 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 um, I'm one of those people that uh, uh, that needs lots of prayer. And I value your prayers this morning. Uh, to Sean and to Linda, we pray for, uh, for you and we bless you, Mob, and all you Mob online. Um, you can call me a brother from another mother as well because uh, I want to affirm the fact that we're family. I came to church and I saw about three or four relatives in that video. And I'm thinking, well, that's where all my, uh, my family's all linked into ACC. So this Baptist is kind of related to you as well. So I work as a faith and development advisor with World Vision. And that basically means I look for the bits where community development, uh, good development practice, uh, what are the sacred drivers for change? What are the spiritual things in community that motivate them for something bigger and better? And our Christian communi- commitments and our Christian convictions. Where does the Bible interface with good development and community aspirations and the dreams for something better? That's my job to help practitioners find them, uh, identify them and amplify them uh, and say, look, that's just not a coincidence. That's the movement of the Spirit of God and we need to acknowledge that, uh, you know, not necessarily bag and tag it, but say, this is transformation and it's beautiful in our eyes. Let's not let it float down the river. Let's acknowledge that and celebrate that as we uh, try and do good change together. Uh, so I'm also a husband to my wife, Kim, and she was going to sit on the side, but she's thankfully moved to the wings. So if I go on too long, I'll see um, uh, somebody with their hands raised up like that. And then tapping. <laughs> if you see that, then that's uh, uh, I've gone on too long. And because I'm an Aboriginal speaker from uh, Queensland and I've come down to a spirit-filled church, part of my commitment to reconciliation is to write my sermon with notes. That's not a guarantee I'll actually follow them, but they're there as a symbolic gesture to say, I don't want to rave on too much, but there's a likelihood. I've got one of these roving mics and I'm moving around. I've got a nephew on the camera over there who's going to track me as well um, uh, as part of my uh, commitment to togetherness. Now, I didn't expect that video. I'm really blessed by that because they preached half my sermon for me about saying, what, what is a NADOC? And I remember saying this to some of the, uh, uh, my community back in Queensland, and uh, I had to stress that NADOC isn't a horse doctor. Uh, um, all the dad jokers in the room got that. <laughs> and all the rest of you is going, really, that is so bad, brother. But a NADOC simply meant National Aboriginal Island, a day of celebration. It originally started out, uh, rightly so, like my cousin said on the screen, as, a, as, a, as a, uh, a day of mourning, but it's moved to a day of celebration. And it's uh, the aspirations and the coming together for the betterment of our people and for our aspirations for a sense of justice. And that the participation of that all along the way were the people of God. 
It wasn't just the radical left that were pushing everything. There are actually people of prayer, uh, people of purpose, people who are seeking the heart and mind of Christ for something better for our mob. Um, and so this year's theme is get up, stand up, show up. And it sounds like a, um, it, brother, is there, is there a, a poster of that little thing uh, to go up the back of that? Thing? No, not that fellow. That's coming later in the sermon. There might be another image. Anyway, it's coming. But the, uh, the theme is to get up, uh, to stand up, get up, stand up, show up as part of our theme for this year. And it sounds like a Bob Marley song. Um, so for some of you already singing the, the tune in your heart, it's not a Bob Marley song, because, but, um, but it is a call to action. It is a call for advocacy. It's a call for partnership and to stand with folk. And um, incidentally, Bob Marley died of skin cancer. Did you know that? I went to my doctor. This is, by the by, this is a bad thing about Aboriginal speakers. They talk about something random on the side. I went to the doctors for a skin check and I had to, uh, and he told me, uh, my brown doctor said, brown people get skin cancer too, brother. So, because Bob Marley did it, because he was running around the soccer field barefoot and the white part of his foot underneath got skin cancer. So to my brown brothers and sisters watching and in the room, don't run around barefoot when you play soccer. Try to keep your feet on the ground and you'll be right. Get up, stand up, show up. This is the language of advocacy. This is the language of action. And I believe as followers of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what denomination, what culture, what country you come from, where you call home, I believe we are called to get up, to stand up and to show up as well. One of the places where this call to stand shows up in the Word of God is in um, Ephesians 6. And this is a standard one that evangelicals love to preach on. And it says, Therefore put on the whole armour of God so that day when uh, the evil day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And uh, after you've done everything to stand... So it begs the question then, in our Australian context, as brothers and sisters of Christ, as modern day disciples really, we're an extension of that uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament where we're modern day followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're it. Uh, we're what the world sees. We're what the world uh, needs in order to see uh, Christ. How do we get up? How do we stand up? And uh, how do we show up? And what's our, our, our position and our posture as godly people in, in, a, in a modern day Australia? Um, the Word of God is full of, of directions and tools and, and pathways to potentially take uh, to speak on the, the call to, to get up and stand up and to show up. I want to just pick a couple. And uh, from uh, my, Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, uh, he says uh, these things. No, O people, the Lord has told you what is good and this is what He requires of you to do what is right. So in some translations it says to do what is right is translated as to do justice or justly, to love mercy or love mercifully in some translations and to walk humbly with our God. To do justice, to love mercifully, and to walk humbly with our God. That's, some people have called this Micah chapter 6, 8, the sort of like the John three sixteen of the Old Testament, uh, because it's a call to uh, not necessarily do the justice of the world, uh, uh, to follow the patterns and the pathways of the people around us, but to uh, actually embody something of the heart and mind of God as we live that out in the world around us. Because we've grown up in ministry together. They're my uncle and auntie as well. So I'm going to call Micah uncle. He was an 8th century prophet to the southern kingdom. His counterpart 
was another fella called Uncle Amos, and uh, and he, they were up to the north, and they were actually prophesying against a time in both Judah and Israel where they were uh, where they were blessed economically, financially. That this king, their kingdoms were doing pretty good. People were pretty well off. However, they were spiritually bankrupt. They were compromised in their witness and testimony, and so they were spiritually shallow. Their wealth, their prosperity was at the expense of other people's suffering and their spirituality, that which they sought to demonstrate in action was pretty um, organised, uh, was, was pretty uh, uh, ordinary in terms of how they demonstrated that. In, in fact, in, in the book of Amos, the prophet there was so upset with the, with the people, he told them, I, I hate I despise your religious festivals, which is pretty strong language. Your assemblies are a stench. Ouch. What are you guys uh, uh, are saying? Oh, my, my NIV says they were a stench, uh, which is pretty a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring your choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard from them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to your uh, music of the harps, but let justice roll down. Let justice and righteousness uh, roll, uh, let justice roll on like a river and righteousness like a never ending stream. That's Amos chapter five. If we're not walking at a talk and justice is a natural expression of our, our, our desire, the kingdom values just outflowing, then, it's, then it stinks to God. Authentic faith without authentic action uh, is what works. It's what the world is looking for um, in, in James. The book of James, is, it says in uh, chapter 2, verse 14, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? What can this kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see... Suppose you see a brother or sister, if we're going to uh, get up, stand up and show up, we need to walk our talk. We need to have an authentic faith that matches an authentic action because that's what people are looking for. Uh, People are looking for uh, a witness and testimony that makes sense. Uh, and while I don't want to bring America into this, and if there are any Americans in the, the building, I don't mean to offend your culture or anything, but I cop it as an evangelical with some of my uh, secular friends. How come you evangelicals, uh, you know, st- stand up for the rights of a child and, and for pro-life and be pro-guns at the same, in the same breath? Uh, how can you could be pro-life and pro-death at the same time? Something doesn't add up. And I feel like saying, well, that's America, it's not me. But sometimes questionable witness. Now, I'm not here to pro-guns or pro-anything. I'm pro-coffee. Um, and people ask me, what's my theology on that? And I just say, I'm post-lactate. I, l- I like to put my milk in after the, you know, that's where my sort of theology uh, on that goes, Yeah. So, yeah, uh, but if there's a question mark, the world drops us like a, you know, like a, like hot coals. And if there's anything of our modern day census, that's, that's, uh, we're, it's sort of like the, uh, the, the witness is coming home to roost. We are called to stand up, get up, stand up and show up. The second thing in, in the book of, of uh, Micah that the prophet talks about to his uh, people uh, was to love mercifully, um, to do justice, to love mercy and walk humbly with our God. There's three things there and Baptist love, three-point sermons. It's the way our brain works we, in, in triplets. Um, so it says there... Uh, 
love mercifully. And the word they translate from that is a, a, a Hebrew word called hesed. And I don't, you know, hesed, oh, I, I can't pronounce that properly. So anybody uh, f- uh, from a Hebrew uh, background, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your culture here. But it's mentioned over 250 times in the Old Testament and expresses an essential part of the character of God. God is love, and we, that's uh, said elsewhere in the Scripture. But this, uh, this Hesed uh, Hebrew text uh, encompasses uh, mercy, compassion, love, grace, and faithfulness in a powerful way. And in, in a way that, that um, brings that all together. And it's not just an emotion or a feeling. Uh, it, it's not an 80s power ballad, folks. As much as I love 80s power ballads, it's, it's an emotion and a feeling that involves activity. It's a powerful compassion. There's an 80s song, brother, there. I see him there. <laughs> um, it's a song. It's, no, it's not a song. It's a word. <laughs> that moves us to transformative action. God so loved that He, He did something. And giving is a verb, it's an action. It's a love that, that, uh, that transforms your desire. To, not as if something uh, to, uh, to um, uh, think of as our own, own, something we own, something to conquer, but something to cherish. And to acknowledge that God has walked through this place before us. This creation uh, that we are in now is sacred because it's, it has the fingerprints of God all over it if you have the eyes to see. And we are called as, as traditional owners of country to walk mindfully and uh, conscious that uh, people have gone before. There have been carers and custodians of space and now it's on us to care and be custodians of the creation which God gives us to look after. And that is a humility. That's nothing to feel. Oh, this is cool. I like this place. Uh, but hey, this is something that I've got to look after and teach my children and my children's children how to look after because it's a gift from God. And if we're to get up, stand up and show up for our nation as the people of God, I want to suggest that it's not only about doing what's right and doing it from a place of love, but walking with humility, knowing that it's not about us. It's not about our needs or our wants or our desires or our our politics or our budget that benefits my particular demographic uh, or my um, capacity to meet my mortgage. Um, uh, it's, It's about God's kingdom. It's about the kingdom of God, folks. And it's about his world and about how we're walking on it. And it's a description of the attitude towards God. God's people, we depend on him. We're not doing God any favours by how much we can rack up, which was what was going on in both the prophets uh, Amos and the prophet Micah's time. People were so uh, proud of their financial capacity and their ability that they said, look what I can do for you, Lord. Offer up this. King is worship band going. And then Uncle Amos turns around and says, it stinks. Humility acknowledges that it's about God, it's not about us, and we are in need of Him. Uh, and we need to actually have that relationship that is conscious uh, that um, we need to be uh, mindful of that uh, uh, posture of humility as we move through the world, as we get up, stand up and walk humbly before God. I tell you what, this leather jacket is starting to get pretty hot up here. <laughs> I usually don't strip off in uh, when I preach, so um, you Canberrans will get it a treat. Thank you, my sister. Um, see, there's Holy Spirit in this place, see? 
which is what happens when you give a Baptist a microphone in a Pentecostal church. Woo! <laughs> it's going to get hot tonight. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, justice, love and humility are kingdom's values for God's people that we should, uh, that we should uh, be looking for when we seek to get up and stand up and show up for our generation. I had an uncle, his name's Uncle Huey Kirk, and he was part of the AOG uh, church in Anala. Uh, and if those in Brisbane, has anybody heard of Anala? Yeah, 4077, respect. <laughs> Anala's like the Bronx of Brisbane, nothing like Charnwood at all. Um, and, um, and my uncle used to have this saying, and uh, you, don't, you, you don't tell a black fellow, you show him. <laughs> And it makes sense to me. I don't know if that makes sense to you. But in discipleship, it's a bit like that. It's not just about telling somebody. It's about showing them. It's not just about proclaiming what the Word of God says, but it's about demonstrating how to walk a life in Christ through your actions. Uh, when actions uh, link up to uh, uh, what you say, things make sense. And that's how my simple brain works. So there's part of me when I was preparing this, do justly love mercy and walk humbly with God. You know, if you ever ask yourself questions in the middle of, your, you know, anything, they reckon it's the first sign of madness. And if you answer yourself, it's either God or you're mad. So the verse in action, I'm glad you asked, brothers and sisters, because here's a painting we prepared earlier. Well, no, I didn't. Um, uh, uh, the Yundamu Baptist Church did for my mother and father as, as uh, missionaries. Now, this is a chapter 3, verse uh, 28. Now, um, in English, it says, uh, Galatians 3, 28 says, Therefore there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male and female, for you are all one in Christ. And what that looks like in Walpuri icono iconograph is that painting that we just showed earlier, brother. Bling. with your kids or grandkids, crossed your legs and sat down in the sand, uh, stand back up again, turn around and look back down at that sand and what you'll see is a U-shape. So anytime you're in Alice Springs or something and you see uh, traditional art that has a U-shape in it, that, that depicts somebody. Uh, because the evidence of your uh, passing through country or being in the land is usually left in the, in, in the, in the sand. You can track it, you can see it. You know, ah, somebody's been there. So the big one, guess who the big one is? It's God, okay. And the, the white dots on the inside is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And you'll see up, up, up above here, there's all of these, uh, I'm not sure how you're getting this on the cameras back home on online, but you'll see outside here, outside of Christ, there's all these little U's and they're different colours, which means they're different races. There's ones with a little round thing in front of it, that's a coolerman, and that's what mums carry their babies in or gather food in. So there's uh, gender uh, demonstrations there. And there's also ones with a little... Uh, like little handcuffs on. That's the ones in slavery. And there's big U's and little U's. So that means there's neither old nor young either. But as we see them little dots there that make their way back into Christ, they are following a pathway into Christ. And in those little U's is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, they haven't changed colour. They haven't changed size, interestingly enough, and they haven't changed genders. The, the, um, the Kuhlman's still there, but they are one in Christ. And uh, for a people with English as their fourth or fifth language, this is sometimes easier to preach to and preach with when people go out into community. Uh, with World Vision, we're doing a program around gender-based violence and we're using Genesis to teach on that, that, you know, male and female, um, when God said in, you know, Genesis 1.26, let us make humanity in our image, both male 
and female. And that catches some Walpuri by surprise because it's the, when God said, let us, therefore it's talking about a triune God saying, make humanity in our image. And they said, hey, that's true, brother. Um, this is how they preach it and teach it and communicate it. Folks, there's neither Jew nor Greek. So if I was to, Uncle Huey Kirk would say, if we uh, don't tell them, show them, it looks like this. There's neither Jew nor Greek. We're black and white. And it doesn't mean that we change colour or the shade of our skins, but it's as if colour didn't matter. It's as if culture didn't matter. And difference isn't uh, an obstacle. Difference is a gift from the Creator. There's neither Jew nor Greek. So there's no racism in the kingdom of God. There's neither slave nor free. There's no classism in the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean uh, rich stop being rich and poor stop being poor. But like in the first century church in Acts, people were surprised because they're saying, well, what's this rich mob doing hanging out with these poor mob in the Jesus food court, you know? They're fellowshipping and they're looking like they belong together and they're loving each other. What's with, I want to be part of that community. So there's neither Jew nor Greek, no racism, rich nor poor, no sexism, male nor female. There's no uh, racism, classism and sexism. So if we're wanting to know how do we look like in action, brothers and sisters, man, this is cool. This guy knows when to come in. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Bless the to be God's love in action. Do justice love mercy and walk humbly with our Creator.